Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Power by Naomi Alderman. So, I will start off by reading the blurb, because it's short and sweet, and then we're going to go through and look at some tabs. I'm going to be updating this review as I read this book, and then at the end, I'll share my overall thoughts and rating. All over the world, women are discovering they have the power. With a flick of the fingers, they can inflict terrible pain, even death. Suddenly, every man on the planet finds they've lost control. The day of the girls has arrived, but where will it end? So as you can kind of get from that, it's sort of, uh, I guess, dystopian, also speculative fiction in a way. Could you call it that? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it does have this weird thing where it's got a double cover at the front. I don't really like this. It's just, that's strange. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the writing and stuff, it actually rem reminds me a little bit of Stephen King at times. And the sort of setup and the way it follows this sort of global event by looking at different incidents... Uh, has reminded me of World War Z by Max Brooks as well, only I would say that this is a lot better. So we've got some great lines in this bit from Margot's perspective, and that's another thing, it does change perspectives a lot, which can get confusing, but, you know. It has to be fake. Fox News is saying not. Fox News would say whatever makes the most people tune into Fox News. Sure, still. What are those lines coming out of her hands? Electricity. But that's just, I mean, yep. Yeah. Where did it come from? Nigeria, I think, went up yesterday. There are a lot of nut jobs out there, Daniel. Fakers, scammers. There are more videos. Since this one went out, there have been four or five. Faked. People get excited about these things. It's a what they call it, a meme. You heard about that thing Slender Man. Some girls tried to kill their friend as a tribute to him. It. Terrible. Nice little reference to Slender Man. So I thought I'd read this a little bit because it's on about, uh, you know... Uh, animal factory farming and that sort of thing, which I've, I mean, I'm vegan as well, so, I'm, and I'm partly vegan because of a lot of the research I did for my novel, which isn't out yet, which is set on a factory farm, so, um, yeah, that's kind of why I found this interesting. Mr. Montgomery Taylor owns a meat packing company with centres here in Jacksonville, and up in Albany and as far as Statesboro. They call it meat packing, but what they mean by that is meat producing, animal killing. Mr. Montgomery Taylor took Ali to see it when she was younger. He had that stage when he liked to think of himself as a good man educating a little girl in the men's world. It's a sort of pride to her that she watched the whole thing without wincing or looking away or carrying on. Mr Montgomery Taylor's hand was on her shoulder like a pair of pincers throughout the visit, pointing out to her the pens where the pigs are herded before their encounter with the knife. Pigs are very intelligent animals. If you frighten them, the meat doesn't taste so good. You've got to be careful. Chickens are not intelligent. They let her watch the chickens being uncrated, white and feather fluff. The hands pick them up, turn them over to show their snowy behinds and shackle their legs into the conveyor which drags their heads through an electrified water bath. They squawk and wriggle. One by one they go rigid, then limp. It's a kindness, said Mr Montgomery Taylor. They don't know what's hit them. And he laughs, and his employees laugh too. Ali noticed that one or two of the chickens had raised their heads. The water hadn't stunned them. They were still awake as they passed along the line, still conscious as they entered the scalding tank. Efficient, hygienic and kind, said Mr Montgomery Taylor. And this is kind of a logical conclusion of what would happen after we discover that women have the power to basically send out these electrical sparks or whatever. Bernie finds a couple of his blokes who've got daughters about the right age, gets them to show what they can do too. They do play fighting, sparring each against each or two against one. Bernie watches them in the garden, sparking and flickering. All over the world people are going crazy about this thing, but a few people always look at anything and go, where's the profit in this? And where's the advantage? And this bit's set in uh, Saudi Arabia, and this is the law has actually changed uh, since the writing of this book, but yeah, at the time of writing, I guess, uh, women weren't allowed to drive cars. Uh, so yeah, this was first published 2016, and this law changed, I think maybe last year or uh, the year before, maybe. Uh, they do not let us drive a car here, she says, but watch what we can do. She puts her palm flat on the bonnet, there is a click and it flicks open. She grins at him. She places her hand just so upon the engine next to the battery. The engine kicks on. The car revs. Higher and higher, louder and louder. The motor thudding and screeching. The whole machine trying to escape from her. Nor is laughing as she does it. The noise becomes louder. The sound of an engine in agony. And then a vast explosive percussion. A great white light out of the engine block. And the whole thing melts. Warps down into the tarmac. Dripping with oil and hot steel. She grimaces, grabs Tunde's hand and shouts, run, in his ear. And they do, they run across the parking lot while she's saying, look, film it, film it. And he turns back towards the jeep just at the moment that the hot metal hits the fuel line and the whole thing explodes. It is so loud and hot that for a moment his camera screen goes white and then black. 
and when the picture comes back there are young women advancing across the centre of the screen, each of them backed by the fire, each of them walking with the lightning. They are going from car to car, setting the motors revving and the engine blocks burning into a molten heat. Some of them can do it without touching the cars. They send their lines of power out from their bodies and they are all laughing. And so we start to see a little bit more of the response that society has towards the power, you know. So I think this is an interesting little section. There are strange movements rising now, not only across the world, but right here in the US of A. You can see it on the internet. Boys dressing as girls to seem more powerful. Girls dressing as boys to shake off the meaning of the power, or to leap on the unsuspecting wolf in sheep's clothing. The Westboro Baptist Church has seen a sudden influx of crazy new members who think the Day of Judgment is coming. The work they're doing right here, trying to keep everything normal to keep people feeling safe and going to their jobs and spending their dollars on weekend recreational activities. This is important work. Yeah, sure, buddy. So I'm going to read this bit out. This is quite a, a hefty bit. It's actually somebody re doing a bit of a sermon as well. So there's a lot of dialogue, but um, I think it's interesting because I imagine that the book probably came under fire from religious groups for this. They come to ask for her teachings. They say, why do you call God she? Eve says, God is neither woman nor man, but both these things. But now she has come to show us a new side to her face, one we have, no one we have ignored for too long. They say, but what about Jesus? Eve says, Jesus is the son, but the son comes from the mother. Consider this, which is greater, God or the world? They say, for they have learned this already from the nuns, God is greater because God created the world. Eve says, so the one who creates is greater than the thing created. They say, it must be so. Then Eve says, so which must be greater, the mother or the son? They pause because they think her words may be blasphemy. Eve says, it has already been hinted in scripture. It has already been told to us that God came to the world in a human body. We have, we have already learned to call God Father. Jesus taught that. They admit that this is so. Eve says, so I teach a new thing. This power has been given to us to lay straight our crooked thinking. It is the mother, not the son, who is the emissary of heaven. We are to call God mother. God the mother came to earth in the body of Mary, who gave up her child that we could live free from sin. God always said she would return to earth, and she has come back now to instruct us in her ways. They say, who are you? And Eve says, who do you say that I am? Ali says in her heart, how am I doing? The voice says, you're doing just fine. Ali says, is this your will? The voice says, do you think a single thing could happen without the will of God? There's going to be more than this, sweetheart, believe me. So we get to this bit here where suddenly it all gets a bit sinister. And I think this is masterfully done as well because a lot of this stuff is a reality for women. And I think reading this as a man, it took me aback so much. And I was like, but this is a reality for a lot of people. We should be more pissed off about this, you know. Thus we institute today this law that each man in the country must have his passport and other official documents stamped with the name of his female guardian. Her written permission will be needed for any journey he undertakes. We know that men have their tricks and we cannot allow them to band together. Any man who does not have a sister, mother, wife or daughter or other relative to register him must report to the police station where he will be assigned a work detail and shackled to other men for the protection of the public. Any man who breaks these laws will be subject to capital punishment. This applies also to foreign journalists and other workers. Looks pass between the men in the room. There are about a dozen foreign journalists who've been here since it was a grim staging post in the business of human trafficking. The women try to look horrified, but at the same time comradely, comforting. Don't worry, they seem to say. This can't last long, but while it does, we'll help you out. Several of the men fold their arms protectively over their chests. No man may take money or other possessions out of the country. The Minister for Justice turns the page. There is a long list of proclamations printed close together in small type. Men are no longer permitted to drive cars. Men are no longer permitted to own businesses. Foreign journalists and photographers must be employed by a woman. Men are no longer permitted to gather together, even in the home, in groups larger than three, without a woman present. Men are no longer permitted to vote, because their years of violence and degradation have shown that they are not fit to rule or govern. A woman who sees a man flouting one of these laws in public is not only permitted, but required to discipline immediately. Any woman who fails in this duty will be considered an enemy of the state, an accessory to the crime, one who attempts to undermine the peace and harmony of the nation. And we have a lot of different, sort of, in the sections, I don't know if you can see that, there are a lot of different diagrams of these sort of purported archaeological finds. Uh, she actually says at the end that two of them are real, but then that's in a bit that's also... Basically, there's a postscript to the novel that's written in a way that serves the purposes of the novel, so I don't know how much to believe what's said in it, you know? 
But uh, yeah, this says rock art discovered in northern France around 4,000 years old depicts the curbing procedure, also known as male genital mutilation, in which key nerve endings in the penis are burned out as the boy approaches puberty. After the procedure, which is still practiced in several European countries, it is impossible for a man to achieve an erection without skein stimulation by a woman. Many men who have been sub many men who have been subjected to curbing will never be able to ejaculate without pain. So it is, it is the male equivalent of FGM, you know. I watched a really interesting documentary on circumcision. Did you know in America it's like eighty five percent of men or something insane are circumcised, and like that that's really odd because in the UK I guess it's like eight percent or something like that, and yeah, it raises a lot of questions about you know. Should you be circum? Should you be chopping bits off of a baby or a kid or whatever who can't, you know, make the choice himself? There's uh, there's this little bit of law here. Um, Peter, the waiter from Tatiana Moskalev's party, had said they used to blind the girls when the power first came. The men there, the warlords, blinded all the girls. That is what I heard. They put their eyes out with hot irons so they could still be the bosses. You see. Uh, we have this bit here which I could kind of relate to because I'm currently quitting smoking. I think I'm on 11 days now. Ali lights a cigarette in the quiet of a stone room in the convent overlooking the lake. She brings it to flame in the old way with a spark from her fingertips. The paper crackles and blackens into glowing light. She breathes it into the edges of her lungs. She is full of her old self. She has not smoked for years. Her head swims. Then we have this sort of this big turnaround at the end, I guess, which I don't want to don't want to talk about because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But I did think it was interesting in the acknowledgements. Um, she says more thanks that can be made to Margaret Atwood, who believed in this book when it was barely a glimmer, and told me when I faltered that it was still definitely alive, not dead. Thanks for illuminating conversation to Karen Joy Fowler and to Ursula Le Guin. Those are some pretty cool people to thank. So overall, I was pretty happy with this. The only thing I would say is that it started to drag a little bit towards uh, the end for me. But still, definitely, this is going to be in my permanent collection. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5. I thought it was very well written, and I thought uh, the way it investigated a bunch of different uh, subject matters was, was fascinating too. So definitely go out and check it out if you can. So there you have it. That's what I made of The Power by Naomi Alderman. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you made of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.